Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Today on the show, we have Elzo Maluk. Her company is called Blue Monarch Group. And what they do is they change hearts and minds. So we were talking a little earlier about psychology-based marketing. Yeah, so our original structure was actually more around the marketing sciences of understanding how campaigns work and didn't. And we pivoted this way because frankly, we got tired of clients coming to us and telling us what campaign works and doesn't without understanding the human element into the process and really why things are performing the way they are. So we pivoted into psychology-based marketing by using everything related to how how people make decisions and and how they confirmation the bias themselves using data when internally they've they've subconsciously already made a decision or sometimes consciously already made a decision. So that's kind of why our, our business is in the, the business of changing hearts and then minds, because you got to change the heart first before the mind goes, decides to make the switch. So in helping to make that switch, what does the journey look like for the customer? So it depends on the customer goal. Some of our projects are much more perception oriented. Other projects are growth oriented. It just really needs to kind of go through it. Our proprietary approach called the butterfly effect really guides people throughout that process by analyzing what are the social constructs that we have to understand within their target audience? What are some of the personality types that we're dealing with? And then how do we guide them through that emotional change plan throughout the process? And it's fitting that we call it the butterfly effect because it is very much string theory. You you pull one emotion and you see the ripple effect in other layers and and go through that process. And most of our clients have a long-term goal when they come to us. Sometimes they have a fire to put out, but usually there's a long-term goal at the end of it that we try to help them guide through while fixing what they need fixed kind of in the immediate. Do you have a story of uh, putting the butterfly practice into effect and then a really creative method and then what the output was for the client? Yeah. So most recently we just did a really cool, interesting project with a restaurant chain. It's more of a boutique restaurant chain that's in the East coast. And we actually helped them not only rebrand their entire section, but also redesign their, in all of their restaurants from a psychology perspective. So everything from what are the impulse controls? What should the temperature be depending on the, the time of day? all the way down to what are the colors that we should use at certain booths versus tables and, and play around with it, even down to like the napkin selection that we did about the process because we wanted to have that very curated experience. And it came from everything from the digital touch points all the way down to the physical. So that way the client had a, an increase in repeat business, which was their main goal. However, what we what we found afterward was there was a new surge of younger buyers and younger patrons coming into their restaurants that they hadn't really anticipated. So not only did we meet and exceed their returning customer value, but then we have this whole new generation of 25 to 32 year olds coming in, in droves that we hadn't, that just wasn't the goal, but the, the way that we rebranded appealed to that target audience as well. How are you able to measure the effectiveness of something like the colors of the field? So the the initial instance that most people have heard of is like color theory we kind of take it several steps further into understanding what color is aligned to what types of personalities and how do we blend that so that way a restaurant's going to have any of all ages but how do you find the right blend into that space and even down to like the words that we specifically chose on the menu and in pairing specific messages on napkins that was what all had to play with it. It's very much like music. You have components of things, but in order for an orchestra to do its thing, every aspect has to has to be dialed well and they have to play to their strengths. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how all these little things add up to changing the hearts and minds. It is. It's super cool to know we're all human and we all, all, all operate in a very similar way regardless of culture and, and regions, the nuances is what makes us really special. And that's what we love to play with. So along your path of your life and career, would you say there's a pivotal or defining moment when you look back? 
I would say that when I was first kind of starting out, that was a really critical aspect. I had been in marketing. I had been in that kind of the data science world. And I just remember being really frustrated without having all the answers with me. It's one of the reasons I, I tended to do well in those types of roles of continuing to ask why, but we always kind of ran into a ceiling, so to speak. And it's one of the catalysts that that helped me form blue was I, I just kept hitting a ceiling of like, well, I want to continue to investigate. I want to continue to research. And sometimes that's not great for the business. Sometimes that is, and you just have to delineate yourself and say, what are you really passionate about? And, and my passion was this. So that was kind of a critical point for me is I could go down this path and, and be successful in it, but it wouldn't fulfill me internally, or I can carve a path of my own. And that was really hard coming from like an immigrant family who came to the United States and we had to kind of say, you have to get a nine to five and have a very stable life because we just came from so much instability. So that, that part was always like a more of an internal struggle. Are you glad you made the choice to have instability? I did. I have gotten very comfortable with ambiguity for sure. Yeah. You hear that from entrepreneurs. It's almost in our DNA. Exactly. Yeah. So what advice did you have for somebody who's just starting out in business or maybe some young entrepreneurs? I, I am a big proponent of like learning your craft really, really well of whatever you want to do. And, and understanding how it fits into society and how it can better society, whether that be in a corporate setting and a non-for-profit, wh wherever it fits into it. So that way there's a monetary value. Because at the end of the day, we all have, want businesses to be successful so we can fulfill our personal needs. So I think that once you hone in your craft to a certain extent, continue going that way and then identify where could this really be used? Where is it valuable? in the marketplace and and that's a good way for me to kind of discern it so that way there's a there's a head and a heart component to to that decision i i, I love it when people say go chase your dreams but we live in a society where financial goals are really really important so i think that's that's the other part of entrepreneurship that i want to address a little bit more like there are at the end of the day we all work for a particular reason and, and fulfilling that's important but making sure we fit into society is just as important. How long did it take you to really hone your craft and figure out this is the need that I can solve? I don't think you're ever like done, but I feel like you get to a point where you're enough rules to know which ones to break. And I feel like probably a few years into running, running Blue as a marketing science firm was, was with a one step, but then you kind of reach this, this pivotal point of I could evolve to the next step. And, and some, and that kind of elevated your game even further. And that's, I think that's a really important part about honing in your craft. Sometimes you hone it so well that you've potentially invented a new one or, or ent entered a new field. So I think I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at. We're actually at a, a stage of another phase of evolution internally. So ask me in six months and I may not be as comfortable with that answer. Yeah, the butterfly, the butterfly effect, right? And now you get revolving. I see your branding is even in how you speak. Yes. So if our listeners wanted to reach out to you or your company, how would they do so? The easiest way is to go to our website and either book a consultation or just reach out to us through our contact information at the bottom of our website. But I'm also available. My LinkedIn is just LinkedIn slash in at Elza Malik. If you want to kind of connect with me directly, I'm happy to always chat a little bit more about how hearts and minds evolve over time and, and how behavior shapes. So happy to discuss that. Well, thank you, Elza, for being on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.